everybody, Simon here, Bangkok Chronicles. I think this is number 11. So on the last one we talked about, my wife had moved in and we'd been out on the first buy-in um, trip together and we, I just bought 50 handbags, which amazed her because I sort of cashed out 10,000 baht, which was a month's salary to her. She hadn't got a clue what we were doing really and all the buying and selling. But over the next sort of 10 days, I started teaching my wife, uh, teaching them eBay, how it all worked. And she started to twig um, when I showed her the money and in, uh, I explained it in so many different ways. But she started to twig pretty quick. Now, in the condo, we only had a sort of dressing table and I had this monitor from the landlord given me to be used and my one laptop. At this point, I went out, we went out, we went to Com Tom and Sam Peng again, Chinatown, and I bought a desk and two office chairs, and that luckily that company delivered, which was brilliant. I then went out, Pantit Plaza, Petrobri Road, bought a new laptop, a higher spec than mine, spent about £500 on it, and I used that as my main one and gave the other laptop to Mem, and we were set up in the condo with um, two laptops, one monitor, um, and she spent weeks and weeks learning eBay and looking at all the products. She'd never been to the UK, so she didn't know the sort of products that would sell, um, so she relied on me. But in our first month living together, um, it was great, it was really good. We weren't always working, we, you know, we'd have uh, quite a few hours every day where we could just wander around and eat and explore. And I learned and saw a lot more of Bangkok because Mem knew it reasonable, reasonably well, and took me to all different ways. We learned those canal boats, the best way of getting around. And I started, we started using those a lot more. Uh, really good, really good way to get around Bangkok and uh, you could just jump on one, pay the 10 baht each and just stay on there for sort of 20 minutes or so and then just get off and you're lost and explore a new area. It's great, really good. Now, um, we even ended up in one road uh, one evening that uh, Mema, she knew all about Kosan Road. That is the Backpackers Road. Um, it's a road where they have mainly bars, restaurants, um, as in McDonald's, there's a Burger King. It's only about 300 meters long. Um, above and behind all those shops and bars and things are really cheap rooms for the backpackers. They're sort of two, 300 baht a night, like hostels and all sorts, really cheap. And it's all the young backpackers wandering up and down. And all the way up is like a market all the time. It's people selling everything. And again, you see some of the latest stuff there that you don't see everywhere. Um, it's a really good area to wander around and just chill out. And you see the stuff. Take photos and start searching around Bangkok to, to find the products. Um, handbags were going great. Purses were going great. I was dabbling with the Chinese $1 watches. That's jewelers, eye loops. All these things were ticking over really well, making good money. Um, but as I was so inquisitive, I was always looking for the perfect item, which would be something like a little box that costs you, say, $10 and sold for 100 That's the dream. As an entrepreneur, buying and selling, you just want something easy that nobody else is selling. That's not hard. That, that, that's so hard to find and I don't think I ever found it. My interactive map, I've started putting some photos and things on there. I'm trying to add to it as we go uh, and learn it, so bear with me. But again, it's on my website, landersmilesthailand.com, along the menu, to point to YouTube and a drop down menu, interactive map. Have a look at it. Now, you don't necessarily have to use it if, to buy and selling. If you're in Bangkok and you want shopping, you can go to this area and find these products, 
even though most of the shops sell in bulk 10 items 100 items so on they will sell you one item but the price is slightly higher but it'll still be higher, cheaper than on the markets but it's a great day out wandering around Chinatown and you have to try the Chinese the, the cafes and restaurants that sell all the shark fin soup and all of this um, it's an experience and at night time it's buzzing in Yawarad Road from all the street vendors and the street food is amazing it's also the big gold zone where all the gold shops are um, and we'll touch on that on a later video I did do a video about it but don't know if it's still listed in the channel I will do uh, a proper video on the gold now I've been working up and we've done the the consoles the PS2, 3s, Xboxes the remote control cars and airplanes and the spare parts um, and drones somebody asked me recently now that Sampeng let it was over the canal now in 2017 it's been demolished but apparently all those sellers are just around the corner somewhere in one of those shopping malls there's two or three floors and they're in there so drones that will be where it'll be in Sampeng, it'll be at the top right of Yawarat Road. Somewhere there will be the drones now that they're popular and all the spare parts. So, there it should be a saving for you for spare parts if you can get there. Occasionally, on these roads in Chinatown, you'll find almost somebody that looks like a beggar and they'll put a little table up and they'll have second hand items. Whether they're stolen or not, I don't know. But there was cameras and watches and mobile phones and things. One of my friends in UK, had a photographer, had said to me, could I look into um, camera lenses? So the, the big cameras, the DSLRs as you call them, you can unscrew the B lens. And those lenses are huge money. Absolutely huge. I looked around and it, again it's in Sampeng on the right hand side of Yawarat Road where I suspect the drones are now in those malls. There was a lot of second hand camera shops with lenses and I went in and I started exploring, getting prices, getting photos of all the stuff and I emailed it back to the UK to my friend. Now the prices were similar um, to the UK. So there wasn't any way there of me buying there and sending back and him having them cheaper. But later on, once Mem and myself get back to the UK, in the UK we have car boot sales. In America they're garage sales, yard sales, where people sell their second hand bits and pieces at their home or out the back of a car. And on later on when one when Mem and myself went back as a six month tourist visa, we shot around a load of car boots and I was finding all these lenses. They were 30, 40 pound, um, which was quite expensive, second hand. But I bought a load of them. And then when we returned to Bangkok, I went to this area and I sold all the lenses and made a fortune. So if you, in your country, if you're going to Thailand on a holiday, Look for second-hand lenses off cameras, take a few with you. You can sell them all around Bangkok and make a nice profit. There you go, lenses. But cameras, there's a section, as I say, top right, Sampeng, for anyone who wants cameras, new, second-hand, even collectible and antique cameras, they were all there. Through that section, it brought me back into the Chinese watch section and as Mem started to get used to th things I was doing and looking for, she started talking. Replica watches. Uh, this has been a passion of mine for years, collecting watches. And I did build up a huge collection of replica watches. Only because I couldn't afford the originals, but and they were just for me. So I always had that interest. And... I kept pointing this out to Mem about these replica watches. We wandered all around Sampen and it was Com Tom again, which has been changed now, but they're still not far from that area. 
we wandered up and down and it's very hot walking around these markets very hot and quite often you find a little shop selling drinks and or a little cafe and sit down and have a coffee and Mem kept talking in Thai to a lot of these sellers and just by chance and it was just luck for me just by chance we sat down having a coffee and a lady on the table next to us was getting a load of drinks for her staff um, Mem asked a few questions and we all hit it off the lady spoke a bit of English she was Chinese um, a little bit of Thai in her and that's where my lucky break came on watches this lady was one of the main importers from all over the world of replica watches she would bring thousands into Bangkok and all the street traders there's probably more people like her but a lot of the street traders especially in all that area they'd go to her get the watches and they'd put them all out on the street for sale she was the main woman um, and she supplied people all over Bangkok well we hit it off um, to this day we're still friends um, and still in contact and she's still doing the same thing she invited us um, across to her office if you could call it that right in the middle of Comtom and it was in a little alleyway between two shops 20 meters in was a desk on like a counter on the left with a little cupboard behind uh, like a glass display cupboard and all just plain boxes there and there was a few watches in the display cabinet but just old what regular watches that weren't replicas <laughs> and when she pulled out some catalogues and showed me um, and then when I pointed oh that's a nice watch she turned around and hidden behind the boxes in little cubby holes and secret compartments out came some of these watches it was amazing and then there was inside this alleyway a bit more she had a guy two guys working there repairing watches or adjusting watches adjusting straps it was all in this hidden alleyway so you really have to dig into these alleys and go into every little alleyway and look what's going on and talk but this lady was my still if I want to watch she is my go-to lady price wise on the street a good well I did do I think a, a video way back on replica watches but there's three main grades of watch and we're talking let's say a replica Rolex really cheap and nasty you'd pay 800 baht on the streets for it at the markets tinny you're just rattling it it's just lightweight and rubbish then there was grade b which were you'd probably pay 2000 baht on the markets and streets for it and it may be an automatic movement from switzerland and eta it might even be um a japanese movement or even a seiko movement it might be a quartz but they would have um, a sapphire glass, not non-scratch glass on the front. And the bezels would work, everything would work and it was quite a nice replica, look the part. As I say, a couple of thousand baht. And then there was the grade A, which are very hard to find. And many, many subscribers have asked me about these grade A's. These can be anything up to three, four hundred pounds, but the originals could be 20, 30 thousand pounds and they are exquisite they they have got swiss movements they have got top of the range eta movements um everything works as it should as perfect replica as you can find but they're a lot of money but because they're so expensive the street sellers don't tend to sell them because not many people will buy them but this lady she had loads um she's recently moved because of Comtom shuffle and everything and I'm still trying to find out I have to email her where she, but she's in that area somewhere but you have to keep going to all the street sellers ask them about the expensive replicas eventually they'll probably point you to her or one of her partners it's the only way you can find them but you've got to find them if you're a real watch collector but only for yourself I don't you know replicas are not good don't go buying and selling replicas, it's any counterfeit stuff, it's not worth it, you're breaking the law. But as a collector, 
buying one for yourself, I don't, well, it still doesn't, it still harms the industry. But if you can't afford the original, it's the nearest you're going to get, then, you know. That, we've just touched on those watches, but that over the next year and a few years after, they played a big part for me as a hobby. So I'll do a whole video on those later on. And as you come through those alleyways, you then get to the adult DVDs, the sex DVDs, the MP3 audio albums. There's a whole new section we'll do on the next video. Sorry I'm jumping about from product to products, but so many of you are asking now questions about each different product. Try and get around all the areas and then we'll cover some specifically later on in the series. And more of what happens with me and Mem. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.